this is Ian from Device42, and thank you again for joining me in the second video in my series on application dependency mapping and some of the functionality on, around what that provides. We left off last time looking at a topology chart for a MySQL server here, and we also started to expand out some of the connectivity to other machines in the environment to see communication all the way up the application stack. So again, we've got our database tier here. Let's pull this in a little bit. We've got our middleware tier here as well as the web tier here running an Apache server. What this view provides is a look at all the connectivity to these machines, regardless of where it's coming from, who initiated it, or what kind of communication it is. This view does not do a lot of filtering. You can hide some service instances from showing, but for the most part, this is generally a good engineering type view because if there's a connection, it's going to show up. We can also start to see uh, unidentified or unmapped IP addresses that are communicating with our target servers here. These indicate a, a couple different things, but really what could potentially happen is that this view can quickly get busy, be very noisy depending on uh, how talkative an, an application is, or maybe there's some kind of monitoring agent, and the view can be potentially become a little overwhelming. And so what we did to assist with that is create what we call affinity groups, and that'll be found in the application section here, affinity groups. These are not configured out of the box, so to do that, you'll come to the affinity group section, click on configure and then enable that in the checkbox here. I would recommend selecting the generate impact and dependency groups option as this is the default option here. This will give you some additional views. Affinity groups are generated using an underlying mechanism called a, a docal query. This is our object query language that we use for reporting, but it also assists in generating the affinity group charts. By default, there's probably about eight or so default queries that will come with Device42, and you can select one of these right out of the box. And you can see here that it'll focus on uh, connectivity in the con service connections in the past 60 days, the past 90 days. You can ignore hidden services, meaning if there are services you, you're not interested in seeing at all, you can hide them and they'll be ignored here. Uh, you can include hidden services. So there's a, a couple different options here. What you can also do is define custom queries that focus specifically on uh, application connectivity specific to your environment. So if you want to add device tags to a device or service instances, you can create a query that filters specifically for that so that you can really hone in on the application processes and the communication flows that you want to see. Alright, so once that's enabled, every night at 2 a.m. the affinity group calculations will run uh, again and update any existing charts or, or create any new ones that may be uh, created as a result. Uh, that happens every night, like I said, but you can also come to the configuration page and process these now. <clears throat> and so if I click on the chart for that, my, that same MySQL server we've been looking at, we'll, we'll see a couple of key differences. Just showing us the global view initially here, so no drill down view into what the service connections are based on, but I can click on an arrow here and see that same level of detail and, and connectivity. So again, here's the MySQL process that we've been seeing uh, communicating with some of our servers. I can also see the operating systems that are running on these devices, so I can see at a glance quickly what OSs make up my application. I've also got a visual timeline up at the top here that shows me how this application may have changed over X amount of days, weeks, or months. So anytime you see a line here, there's a new discovered device or service that's been added to the chart. And if I start to go back, I can see how this application has changed in complexity over time. Going back to the present day here, I'm going to click on my arrow again and see some, some information. So looking at the MySQL process again, another mechanism that is used to control uh, app, excuse me, affinity group views is the concept of what I call highlighted services. And, highlighted, and services can be highlighted in two ways. They can be pinned or they can have a certain topology status. A pinned service will form the basis of an affinity group. Device42 will typically pin database services out of the box. It will start that affinity group calculation. It will look at subsequent communications on other servers that our target server is communicating with, and then continue that chain out until it doesn't see any more meaningful communications between servers. So again, a pinned service, like my MySQL service here, this was pinned automatically by Device42. This formed the basis of a affinity group chart. Device42 then made calculations based on other services that were running on the other machines here and continues that chain out until we don't see any more of those communications. Now maybe there are services you want to include in your affinity group charts that Device42 isn't going to 
include as one of those meaningful services or meaningful connections. The other option to highlight a service is called starring a service. And so if I come to the Java service page here, I can see an example of that as well. So this uh, topology status for this Java instance has been changed to starred, which means it's not going to have its own affinity group chart uh, focusing on it, right? It's not pinned in this case, but because it's starred, it's going to show up on other affinity group charts. And so that's how you can ensure service communications for specific application flows or, or connectivity will show up in your affinity group charts. And so you can do this uh, through the UI. You know, I can come into a, an instance here and click the edit button, change the, the status or the pinned option uh, through the UI. But obviously, if you're working with a lot of service communications in the environment, there are a couple ways to do that in bulk, either through a spreadsheet import, uh, as well as going to the services instance page and uh, using a, another reimportable export of, of those to, cha to change the topology status or the pin status in bulk. Thank you for joining me in the second video here, uh, focusing on affinity group calculations. If you have any questions, pl please feel free to reach out to us, and please join me in the next video where I talk about business applications. Thank you.